Welcome to the John Gets Games tutorial for Tabanusi. In this video, I'll be teaching you the rules to the game as it's being played, and I'll be showing the first many rounds of the game. Now, I do want to ask that if you enjoy this video, that you please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. In addition to that, if you'd like to directly support the channel and the creation of videos just like this one in the future, then please go to johngetsgames.com support. There you'll find a bunch of ways that you can really help things out, and many of them come with perks like watching some videos early and advertisement free, as well as voting on which of those videos are made. The last thing I'd like to ask is if while you are watching this video, you see a turn that we should have done differently, or maybe some part of the game really jumped out to you, then please comment down below because I love to see that kind of feedback. All right, let's now jump into the game. Out here, we have the game fully set up and ready to play for our three different players. Now, before I start, I would like to ask that you please turn on the Klingon subtitles because I might make mistakes as I'm showing you the game, and those will let me put corrections on the screen where you should be able to see them, and I will also put corrections below the video in the top comment. Well, let's start things off with a brief overview of the game. Thematically, it's set in the late Bronze Age, and this is the great city of Ur. Now, in this game, each player is an architect, and we are going to be constructing the city of Ur as we play until five scoring rounds have been performed. Mechanically, the way the game works is you are all going to have an assistant and an architect out here on one of the five spots. On your turn, you're going to choose one of these resource dice on the location where your assistant is. And then you're going to send your architect to the location that depends on the value chosen. So this two means the architect would go to the two spot. Then this player would keep this as a white resource. And then on that player's next turn, their assistant is going to move over here. And then that player will take an action over there. So as you can see on your current turn, you decide where your next turn is going to happen. After choosing a resource, players can then take up to two actions within that specific district. As you can see, there are five different districts on the board, and each of them has three to four action options. In districts one, two, and three, players can start project plans for various buildings out here in those districts. Players can also construct buildings, putting these plastic tokens down and removing these project tiles. And players also have the ability of putting water and garden tiles down into those districts. Whenever a project tile is placed, you get the benefits that are underneath it, and whenever you construct, you actually build on projects that might not even be claimed by you. In fact, the more of the project tiles that you put down, the more expensive that building is going to be to make. That means if you build a building on projects your opponents put down, it's cheaper. However, those opponents will then progress up on these mastery tracks. The next district is number four, and this is the port. Over here, you have the ability of putting your own house tiles down onto the outside, and you also can place claim markers onto various ships, and these will give you an ongoing effect that you can use for the rest of the game, and these were randomly put out here during setup. When putting houses down, you also gain the benefits that you cover up, and if you ever put claim markers down onto a full row or a column, you take the associated Harbor Master tile, which is going to give you a one-time bonus or three points at the end of the game. Finally, we have the fifth district, which is the Ziggurat. Over here, you can place your houses down onto specific Ziggurat locations. You will get bonuses if you cover them up, and then you can put claim markers onto these Ziggurat scoring tiles, and these were also placed randomly at the start of the game. Now, at this point, I think it's time to talk a little bit about scoring. And if at the end of any player's turn, all of the dice in one of these districts are removed, then we are going to have an overall scoring. In this case, the district without any dice is going to score. Players will get points for their buildings in these first three districts that are also based off of their mastery track location. So the higher up you go, the more victory points you get for those buildings that you have out here of the matching color of that mastery track. Down here in the port, you will score points for your tokens in the same rows and columns as your buildings. And in the Ziggurat district, you will score victory points for these tokens that you put down onto these scoring tiles, depending on what the condition of those tiles is. Now, the person who triggered the scoring is going to take a gold token, and this is also used to track how many scorings we have done throughout the game. Once we have finished five full scorings, that will trigger the end of the game. We'll finish the round and then play one more round. Then, for final scoring, we will rescore every single one of these five districts. Players will then have the ability to score these urban cards that we drew randomly during setup, and then the player who has the most victory points will be the winner. Speaking of that, I think it's now time to start playing the game, and today we are going to play as the purple player, and we also have the starting player token, which means we can now take the first turn of the game. At the start of the game, our architect as well as assistant are not on the board, so for our very first turn, we have to choose one of these five districts to place them down into, and then they will both stay on the board for the rest of the game. Now, I think we want to head over here to district number two. 
After that, we can now take a standard turn, and there are three steps for that that we have to do in order. In the first step, we have to take one of the resource dice that are on the barge of the associated district that we went to, and then we are going to send our architect to the district that matches the value of the die that we just grabbed. These dice were rolled during setup, so as you can see, we could take a 1, a 2, a 3, or a 6. Now, you may have noticed that there are only 5 districts, so if we took this 6, then we could send our architect to a district that does not show up in the other options here on this barge. As you can see, the barge does not have a 4 or a 5, so by taking this 6, we could send our architect to districts 4 or 5 if we wanted to. Now, I think we actually want to go to District 3, so let's take one of these 3s. This means the architect is going to head over here, and that just signifies that we are going to take our turn in District 3 for our next turn. Now, we can take this die and place it in front of us, and for all intents and purposes, the value of the die no longer matters once we've moved our architect. This just counts as one yellow die, which can be spent as a yellow resource. After that, we can move into the second step of our turn, where we can take up to two different actions. We can see a little X2 right here to remind us that these are the action options that we can choose from, because this is the district where our assistant is. Let's focus in a little more, and I do want to point out that one of these options is actually a tile that we randomly put there during setup. There are six of these action tiles, and you place them into random districts at the start of the game, and they will stay there for the entire game. So that's going to introduce some variability from one game to the next, because these actions will be in different spots. Speaking of variability, during setup, you can also go with random barge assignments, where you take these barge tokens, you shuffle them up, and then you place these onto those spots on the board, and then you take the associated tiles that match that color and place them over that matching spot on the action area. There's a matching pair for each of these, so that's once again a way to have variability in the game, where each time you play, the barge colors are going to be associated with different districts. Now for this tutorial, I decided to stick with the pre-printed barges that are on the board. So let's now take actions, and remember we can perform up to two, but we could do zero actions if we wanted. Now I think we want to start with a place a project tile action. The way this works is we're going to take one of the three different color project tiles, we're going to put one of our claim markers on top of it, and then place it into a legal spot in the district where our assistant is. So let's focus out, and as you can see, these are the three stacks of different color project tiles. I think we want to go with a white project tile, so we can take that from the top, and then we can place this into District 2, which is this area right over here. Now when it comes to placement rules, we cannot put this down onto a spot that is not available for our player count. This is a three-player game, and these locations right over here all show the four-player count, so that means we can't place into any of those four spots. The next restriction to talk about involves the color of these tiles. If we had chosen a yellow one, for example, then we would not be able to place this orthogonally adjacent to any yellow buildings. So this spot, that spot, and that spot would be illegal, but if you go on the diagonal, that means they are not connected, and that would be a legal placement if we wanted to. The next restriction has to do with having matching color tiles out here. If, for instance, this was over here and now we wanted to build this tile, we would have to place this adjacent to the previous project tile of that color. We could not place it unconnected over there like that. So if this was here already, we could put this onto any of those four spots. And if you have a situation where there is already a project of that color that has three tiles, then you are not allowed to put a fourth one down because these can have a maximum of three. So in this circumstance, we would not be able to place a white project tile anywhere in this district. The final restriction involves the claim markers that we have in front of us. We start the game with five of these, and if we don't have a claim marker, then we are not going to be able to place a tile because we have to put a claim marker on top of it. With all of those restrictions in mind, I think we're going to place this white project tile right here. There were no other white project tiles, so we could place anywhere. We obviously have a token that we can put down on top of it, and we are also not adjacent to a white building, so that is going to be legal for us. Now, whenever we put a project tile down, we immediately gain the benefit that we just covered up. In this case, we can go up once on the mastery track that matches the color of the tile that we just covered that icon up with. Obviously, that's a white tile, so we can increase our white mastery track once. These tracks can be found over here, and as you can see, there's a white, yellow, and brown track. So we can find our purple mastery token, which starts at the bottom, and we move it up once. Now, if you ever have a situation where you have moved your bottom-most token up, then that is when you're going to gain these specific benefits. So, for example, if this token was there, and that one was there, and then we gained a brown mastery, we would put this here, and that is the bottom-most token, and that would get us this bonus, which would let us take a claim token from the supply and put that into our personal area. Area where we could then use. In the future, if we increased brown again, we would have once again increased our lowest track, and that would get us a gold bar. 
Gold is great to have around because it counts as one resource when you spend it, and there are other special actions that require you to spend gold in order to gain their great benefits. Now, I'm sure you've noticed there are victory points on the left side as well, and these are points that we will get when we do scorings, and I'll go into the detail of that later. Obviously, at this point, we have just gained one mastery track advance on the white track, so this will go here, and obviously we don't gain this benefit because there are other tokens still below that one. After gaining that benefit, we have finished this project tile placement action. This means we can take another action, and if we wanted to, we could perform that same one again. Obviously, if we did that, and if we chose to go with a white project tile, we would have to put it adjacent to this one, going onto any of these four spots, and if we went there, that would just get us three victory points, which does seem pretty nice. You know what? I think that is what we're going to do. So we're going to take that action, cover that up to get the three points. We take one of our claim tokens and put it on top of there, and we have three claim tokens left in our supply to use. Now we can take those three victory points, and as you can see, we actually started with 10, because there are ways to spend points, and I'll explain how those work later on. Either way, we are now up to 13 points. So that's finished our second action, and I do want to emphasize that with that second project tile placement, we didn't have to place a white tile, I just wanted to in order to cover up those three victory points. With our actions done, we can now move into the third and final step of our turn, where we first check to see if there is a scoring. If at this moment any of the five barges had no dice on it, then that would trigger a scoring, but obviously that is not the case, and I'll go into the details of how scoring works later on. The final thing that we have to do is move our assistant to the district where our architect is, so we can go right over there, and that once again indicates that this is going to be the district where we take our action on our next turn. Alright, our turn is done, which means play can now move clockwise. And in this case, that means the orange player can go, and since it's their first turn, they have to place their architect and assistant down onto any district. It's worth noting there is no impact to the game if there are other players, assistants, or architects in the same district as yours. In this case, orange has decided they would like to start in District 4. Now, the first thing they have to do is choose one of these resources, and they've decided to take this blue 4. Now, the 4 means they actually leave their architect here, and that means on their next turn, they are going to once again be in the 4th district, where they can perform actions. This is now a blue resource that they can put in their area, and obviously their architect doesn't move, because they are already in the 4th district. Now they can perform up to two actions from these three options. Once again, one of these was randomly placed here at the start of the game. The first action they want to perform is claiming a ship tile in the port district. This is going to cost them two gold bars, and every player starts with two gold, so they can spend these to the bank. After that, they can place one of their claim markers down onto any ship tile that they haven't already claimed. As you can see, these are ship tiles, and all but these two are tiles that were randomly placed here during setup. This is always in the top left corner, and that one's always in the bottom right corner. They have a bunch of options to choose from, and they've decided to go with this one here. Now that says that every time for the rest of the game, whenever they place a house down, they will gain two victory points. Now it is worth noting that there is no benefit or penalty for being the first one to place on a tile, so in the future we could go over here and get that same benefit, and even though the orange player is there already, that doesn't directly have an effect on us. Now I say directly, because there are these harbor master tiles around the outside. As soon as a player has claim markers on a full column or row, they will be the player to take this, and then they can either keep it for three victory points at the end of the game, or discard it to gain a one-time bonus action. So obviously there is something of a benefit of getting in first to try and complete a row or a column before your opponents to gain these lucrative harbor master tiles. Orange is done with their first action, and for their second one, they want to perform this one that was randomly placed over here. That's pretty simple, it just gets them one gold, and it lets them take a claim marker from the supply, and they can put it into their personal area. Once again, these are randomly placed out on the board, so it's fortuitous to have a gain a gold bar action in the same area where you need to spend gold bars, so it's possible we might see more ship tiles being claimed in this game than we would if this top action was one of the others. So, Orange will gain a claim token from the supply, and you may have noticed that they actually had six over here instead of the five that the rest of us had, and that's because during setup we all put one building down into the districts, and then we gained the associated benefit. For ours, we got an extra gold bar, which is why we have three. The orange player was able to take an extra token from the supply, which is why they started with six, and the red player gained a garden tile, which is why they have this tile right over here. Orange took their token, but they haven't taken the gold yet, so they can place this into their area, and that's finished up both of their actions. Now at this point, none of the barges are empty, so there is no scoring, and the assistant doesn't even need to move because they are already in the same district as their architect. That means Orange is done, and now the red player can take their turn. 
After considering their options, they would like to start in District 2, just like we did. Now they have to choose one of these dice, and they are going to take the 6, and again, that lets them go to a district that does not currently show up from the other options. So they can't send the Architect to the 1, the 2, or the 3, but it could go to 4 or 5, and they've decided they would also like to go to the Port District, so they'll send their Architect over there. Now they've gained this yellow resource, and after that, they can perform up to two actions here in District 2. The first one they want to do is on this random tile that we put there. This lets them take one claim token from the supply, and they can add that to their personal area. They can also take one garden tile from the supply and put that into their area. And finally, they can take one of the question mark special water tiles. As you can see over here, there's a stack of regular water tiles that are blank on both sides. And then there is a smaller stack of these special water tiles, with three of them face up. Now whenever you can take a special water tile, you take one of these three that are on the board. And they've decided to take this one. After you take any of these, you immediately replenish, so that means that this will go right there. And then they can add this water tile into their supply. Red's first action is done, and for their second action, they would like to go gardening. This action shows up in districts 1, 2, and 3 in the exact same way, and the first thing they can do is spend as many blue resources as they want to take an equal number of water tiles from the supply. They can also spend any number of green resources in order to take that many garden tiles from the supply. Currently, Red has two garden tiles and one special water tile, which acts just like a water tile for all intents and purposes. And we can also see that they have two gold, each of which can be a wild resource. They have a yellow resource over here, and they have a blue crate. At the start of the game, all players received one of these randomly, and you can spend these crates by flipping them over to generate one of that associated resource. After that, you leave it on the exhausted side, and there are ways to flip this back over again to once again use that resource later on in the game. In this case, Red has decided to do that, so they've gained one blue resource by flipping that crate over which means they can take one regular water tile from the supply. So they could put this over here, and they could spend green resources to take more garden tiles. They could spend a gold to get that green, but they've decided they're happy with two garden tiles at the moment. This means they can move into the second part of the gardening action, where they can place as many water tiles down as they want, and then they can place up to three garden tiles down onto water tiles within this district. Now when you place water tiles out, they must go orthogonally adjacent to a previous water or garden space. And once again, they can only place into the district where their assistant is. Now, as you can see, there are water spaces out here which connect these districts, and there are also a couple garden spaces already printed on the board. The red player can now place water tiles, and they've decided to put this one here because it's adjacent to at least one water tile, and then they'll place this special water tile there because once again, it's adjacent to a water tile. Now, whenever you put water tiles down, you do not gain the benefits that you just covered up. So that means that nobody gets this, and that water tile will stay right there. Now the red player has placed as many water tiles as they want. Technically, they've placed all of the water tiles that they have, and after that, they can place up to three garden tiles. The way this works is these have to go down onto water tiles within this district, and you are allowed to place onto the pre-printed water spaces that are between these districts. Once again, red can place up to three of these, although they only have two, and they've decided they are going to put both of these down. The first one is going to go right over here, and whenever you cover up an icon on a water space with a garden, you do gain that benefit. So that means the red player is going to gain one gold from the supply, and then they do have to place one of their claim tokens down onto that garden. Now, it's an important thing to know that claim tokens on gardens will stay there until the end of the game, whereas claim tokens on project tiles will be returned to players' supplies or to the general supply, where players can then take it later on through various actions. Each player only has 15 claim markers, so that means the red player now has one less claim marker for the rest of the game to do things like place tokens down onto project tiles. Now red can place up to three garden tiles, and they've only placed one, so they're now going to place this other one. Again, they don't have to, but they have decided to, and they're going to put it right here on top of the special water tile that they placed. Once again, when you place on top of water that has icons, you get those when you put the garden there, and this specifically says they can spend a white, yellow, or brown resource in order to go up once on the associated mastery track. Currently, red has three gold and one yellow resource. Remember, the value on this resource die does not matter once you've taken it. In this case, they've decided they are going to spend this yellow resource, and that will let them increase their yellow mastery track once. Of course, they also have to put a claim marker of theirs right on top of that garden. So let's focus over here, and red is going to increase their yellow mastery track once, and then the resource die when spent goes off to the side in the general supply, and the value on that die does not matter. 
Well, Red has now done their two actions, and you may be wondering why they actually care about having these gardens out, and don't worry, I'll talk about that once it's time to talk about constructing buildings. At this point, none of the barges are empty, so there's no scorings, and the Red player can finish their turn by sending their assistant over to District 4 to match up with their architect. All right, play can now move clockwise, which means it's once again time for us to take our turn. And as you can see, our assistant and our architect are over here in District 3. So the first thing that we have to do is take one of these resource dice. Now, I have to admit that part of me would like to also go over here to the port. Spending a couple of gold that we have in order to claim a ship tile is good because those give a variety of ongoing benefits for the rest of the game. The issue is that there are no fours over here, and there's also no six that could potentially let us move over to the port district. Now, technically, there is an expensive way to move our architect over here, because whenever you take a die and move your architect, instead of sending them to the district that matches that die, you can spend a gold back to the supply to then send your architect to any district of your choice. So we could spend a gold to send our architect to the port district. But honestly, I think we just want to stay here in the third district, and there's three threes, so that shouldn't be hard. Let's take one of these, which means our architect will stick around in the third district, and we've now gained a white resource. After that, we can take actions, and considering we only have three claim markers, I think let's go for this action first. This is going to get us two victory points, and then we can take two claim markers from the supply and put those into our personal area. Two points will bring us to 15, and then we can add these into our area. And then after that, I think let's do a project tile placement, much like we did on our first turn of the game. So far, our opponents have not been doing that. We have been the one focusing on putting project tiles down. So we could put a white, brown, or yellow tile down, and remember if we put a brown down, we would not be able to place it orthogonally adjacent to this previously constructed brown building. In this case, I think we actually want to place a yellow project tile, and I'll describe the reasons for why we're going with yellow versus other colors later on in the tutorial. Let's place this one right over here. Obviously we can place it anywhere in this district because there aren't any yellow project tiles already out here. Now that is going to get one of our claim tokens, and we will get this bonus, and that specifically says that we can place another project tile within this specific district. This bonus specifically means we have to put another tile of the same color, and that means we have to put this adjacent to this previously placed tile, and I think we'll go right over here. That can take a claim marker, and then we get this bonus, and that says we're going to take one resource die from the green barge, and whenever we do this, we must take the highest value die from that barge. Currently, the green barge has two sixes, so we're going to take one of those, and now this is a green resource that we can spend later on in the game. Well, that's finished up our two actions. It was nice being able to place two of these project tiles for one of those actions. At this point, we can now move our assistant to the same district as our architect, but they are already there, so that's going to finish our turn, and now it's time for the orange player to take their turn. The first thing we have to do is take a die, and I think let's take a value 5 die. That means our architect is going to head over here to the Ziggurat district, and then this will turn into a white resource. Now we can take actions, and I think let's start by placing another project tile. And if we were to place a yellow tile, it would have to go adjacent to these. And while we could do that, I think instead let's put a white tile down, and we're going to put it right over here. Obviously we could not put a brown tile on that location or yellow, because yellow would have to go adjacent to these yellow projects, and a brown tile can never go next to a brown building. So we can put this white project tile right here and put a claim token on it. So far we've been doing a lot of project tile actions this game. Now that covered up this bonus, which lets us take the highest value white resource die from that barge. So we're going to take this five, and now we've gained another white resource. After that, we have one action left, and I think it's time to construct buildings. That is this action right over here, and this action shows up in districts one, two, and three, with the only differences being the color of the resources. Now let's focus in on these icons. And as you can see, the first thing we have to do is select one color of project tile, and then we will construct a building using all of those tiles. In this case, we could select white or yellow because there are currently white and yellow project tiles within District 3. In this case, I think we'll select yellow. Then we have to pay two resources of the color matching this district. In this case, District 3 has the white barge. So we can spend two out of our three white resource dice back to the supply. Now after that, we have to pay one resource for every one of these tiles that has our own token on it. In this case, we went with yellow, and both of these have our tile. The resource we have to spend matches the tile itself, and both of these are yellow, which means we have to pay two more yellow to do this. If in a different example, it looked like that, in this case, we'd have to spend one more yellow because this has our token on it. You don't spend any extra resources for project tiles that have opponent's claim tokens on them. 
Obviously, that is not the case, so we now have to spend two yellow. And we can do that by getting rid of this yellow die, as well as by flipping over our yellow crate. After that, we can now remove all of these claim tokens, and any of our own color have to go back to the supply, whereas any of an opponent's color goes back to their personal area. In addition to that, each of our opponent's claim tokens that we removed will increase their mastery track by one. That increase depends on the color of building being constructed. So for an example, if the red player had a claim token and the orange player had a claim token, they would get these tokens back and each of them would go up once on the yellow mastery track because we are currently building a yellow building. Obviously that's not the case though. For this build action, we were the only ones with claim tokens on there and all of our tokens go back to the supply. Now it's time to swap these projectiles out with building tokens. We can remove these and place them back into the supply. And then we have to place one of our buildings down on top of one of these yellow tokens. Because we constructed a yellow building, that means we must take this building token here. And if we didn't have any building tokens in that column, we would instead pull them from down here. Now, whenever you remove a token, if there is a reward underneath it, you gain that. So in this case, we are going to gain one more claim token from the supply. In addition to that, if you have cleared an entire column, then you would get these associated bonuses. This one right here lets you claim any ship tile in the port district, and the other one simply gives you 10 victory points immediately. So we can place this down on top of the building that we just constructed. And when we do this, we can put this down on top of any of these tokens that we just placed, and it does not matter. So this is functionally identical to that right there. What this means is we now control this building for the rest of the game, and it is a size 2, because it has two of these tokens. This means buildings can be of size 1, 2, or 3, because remember, when you're putting these projectiles down, you can never put a fourth projectile next to three that are already within that district. So we've successfully built a size 2 building, and the next thing that can happen is we have the option of spending one gold bar in order to put a claim token down onto a ship tile that matches the exact number of this building size. In this case, we built a size 2 building, so we can spend one of our gold bars in order to claim any value to ship tile in the port district. We currently have three claim tokens and three gold, so I think let's go for it. We will spend that gold, and now we can place this down onto one of the value 2 ship tiles. And as you can see, there's one printed on the board, and then there are two that were randomly placed here during setup. This one over here says that for the rest of the game, whenever you place a garden tile down onto the board, you take a claim token from the main supply and put it down instead of from your personal supply. That certainly seems nice, but I think we're actually going to go for this ship tile instead. That says for the rest of the game, whenever we do this action up here, instead of spending two gold, we can spend one blue resource and one gold. So we've effectively made that action easier to do, because of course whenever you go to this district, you take one of these blue resources. So we just need one gold bar going in, and of course we can activate this to gain a gold bar as well. So in the future, we could just go here even if we have no gold bars and no blue dice, we would get one blue resource, and we can activate that first, and then do that for our second action. I think this is a pretty good combo overall. Actually, it's even better than that because this gives a claim marker, so if we didn't have one available, that would give us one that we could then put down onto that ship. Now there is one last thing to talk about when constructing buildings, and that has to do with potential garden bonuses. If an opponent has a garden next to a building that is being constructed by you, then that opponent is going to get to go up one mastery track of their choice for each of their gardens next to that building that was constructed. What that means is as long as the red player is not the person to construct this building, they are going to gain a bonus of going up a mastery track of their choice because they have a garden here, and that means that red is pretty disincentivized to construct this building over here. Once again, you only gain that garden benefit when the building is being constructed by a player who does not have a claimed garden next to it. Well, that's finished up a pretty good turn for us. We can now move our assistant over here to District 5 because that's where we put our architect. Our turn is done, which means Orange can go, and they're going to start by taking one of these resources. After considering their options, Orange is going to take the two. That's going to move their architect over to the second district. And now they can take actions. The first one they're going to do is here, and that lets them spend two blue resources in order to put a house down onto one of these house locations on the outside of the port district. When placing houses into the port district, you must take them from the bottom colorless row, and it does not matter which one of these you take, because there is no bonus underneath any of them. Now they can place this around the outside. As you can see, in each of the three columns and three rows, there are two different locations. You can either place your house onto the leftmost location and get that immediate benefit, or you can place it onto the rightmost location, and that will get you this crate tile, which you can then use for the rest of the game, and it starts on the usable side. 
In this case, Orange has decided that they would like this crate tile, so they were going to take this. Now, it's worth noting, players are never allowed to have two of their buildings within the same row or column, so that means Orange would never be able to place another building on this spot here. So, that crate token will go onto their board, and now they can use this for the rest of the game. As you can see, players can only hold up to four crates, so once you have four, you cannot gain any more. Now we have already seen that these crates can be used to gain one of that associated resource, but one thing that I'd like to point out is that as a free action on your turn, you can return any one resource to the supply in order to flip any of your crate tiles over. So that means in an example, if the orange player had a white resource, then they could, as a free action, return this to the supply to flip over any of these crates, including this blue crate right over here. The only restriction is you can only refresh each of these crate tiles once per turn. What this means is you can turn a resource that you have in front of you into any resource that you have an exhausted crate for. Well, the orange player has gained that crate. And then, of course, they gain a benefit because, remember, during their first turn, they put this token down onto that ship tile. That says every time they place a building down, they will get two points, and they just placed a building, so orange will gain two points from that ship benefit. This means orange is up to 12. That's finished up one of Orange's actions, and for their second one, they're going to do this again. That means they once again have to spend two blue resources, and they're going to do that by flipping over this blue crate, and then they will also get rid of one gold, because that acts as a wild resource. After that, they can place another one of their bottom buildings down into the port district, and they've decided to go over here, and this would let them go up one mastery track of their choice, but it looks like instead they are focusing on a resource engine, so they're going to go here and take yet another crate token. This is going to get them a brown resource when they use it. They'll place that right over here, and they only have space for one more crate in this game. Orange once again gains two points for constructing a building based off of that ship tile that they've activated. Well, Orange is done with their actions, and we still don't have a scoring because there are dice on every barge. So Orange can finish their turn by sending their assistant over there, and now it's time for the red player to go. After considering these options, they are going to take the three value blue die, so their architect will move over to the third district. Red can now take actions, and they're going to spend two of their gold bars in order to claim a ship token, and they're going to go for this one here. That says, for the rest of the game, whenever they place a project tile down, they could spend one resource of any color to then go up the mastery track that matches the project tile color that they just placed. After that, for their second action, they are simply going to take a gold bar, as well as one of their claim tokens from the supply. Red can finish their turn by moving their assistant over here, and now it's time for us to go again. We are up here in the Ziggurat district, and we have to start by taking one of these resources. I think we'd like to go to the port district on our next turn, so let's take this six. Obviously, there are no fours over here, which means we can send our architect over there. We could also send them to the second district, since there are no two value dice there. Now we can take actions, and the first one I'd like to do is down here. That says we can spend two green resources, and then place a house down into a Ziggurat. So we can spend these resources, and then the house is going to go down into one of these three ziggurat areas, and the color house that we place will depend on the ziggurat area that we choose. Now there are competing factors pulling me in a couple different directions. And the first thing to point out is if we go to the yellow ziggurat area, there is no bonus underneath that spot, whereas if we go to the white or the brown ziggurat area, that will get us a gold bar, which is definitely nice to have around. So, that leads us to thinking we should go for white or brown, but when we put a building down, we also gain the benefit that we cover up. As you can see, there are yellow mastery tracks over here, white and brown on these associated areas, and we currently have not gone up on this yellow track. Now, that's important, because when the first three districts have scorings, these tracks are going to dictate how much points we get for the buildings we've constructed there. Currently, we've built three yellow buildings and none of the other type. That means if we have a scoring and our yellow mastery track is at zero, then we'll get no points for those buildings. However, if we are at the one or two spot, we will get one point for each size of the buildings. But of course, in order to do that, we have to go to yellow, so we won't get that bonus gold. Now, there are other ways to go up these mastery tracks, and I don't think we are super close to a scoring just yet, so I think we aren't going to go to the yellow district. That means we're going to go to brown or white. Now, when scorings happen, we are going to get points based off of the ziggurat tiles that are over here, based off of how many tokens we put down on top of them. 
When we place a building down, we will put a claim token from our supply onto the leftmost spot that does not have our token down on it. So that means if we went over here, we'd put our token onto that spot just like this. And when this district scores, we are going to get zero points for every one of these lines that we've crossed with our mastery tokens. So that means we won't get any points for this tile until we've done this twice. And of course, when you put these tokens down, you are permanently committing them to those tiles. So you don't have those tokens for doing other things like building project tiles out in the districts. So, as you can see by going to brown, this really is only going to get us points once we've gone here twice. So that leads me to think that maybe we should go to the white area instead. I think that is going to be good enough, so that means we can take this white building and place it onto one of these spots. We can either go up once on a mastery track, or we could take a gold. And honestly, at the moment, I think we're going to take the gold. So we can take that from the supply. And then we can take another one because we cleared off that gold space on this white row where we pulled that house from. After that, we have to put a claim marker down, and that says that whenever this district scores, we're going to get two points for every one of our houses in the port district. Of course, at the moment, we don't have any. That being said, our architect is currently in that district, so on our next turn, we are now much more incentivized to build at least one of those houses down because it'll score us two points during the scoring. And of course, if we put more of our houses over here in the white ziggurat district, we'll put more tokens down, and it's the rightmost one of ours that's going to score, so that would just increase the amount of points we'd get for those houses. Now, it's worth noting our tokens have no impact on our opponent's tokens. If they come over here with their houses, we just share these spots, and it doesn't matter who got their first or last. All right, that's finished our first action, and we still have one white resource and four gold resources. That means we could spend two of those gold to do another ziggurat action, but I think we are not going to do that. Instead, we're going to choose one of these two up here. This one is pretty simple. It says that you can refresh up to two of your crate tiles, and then you can pull one token from the supply. And this one up here says you can take one resource token from the supply, and you can move your architect to any district of your choice. As you can tell in the Ziggurat district, two out of these three actions are randomized at the start of the game. Considering we are now incentivized to build some of those port district houses, that means we want blue resources. And with that in mind, I think we're going to perform this action here. That means we can take any resource from the supply off to the side of the board, and we could move our architect to any district if we wanted. But I think I'm fine with the architect hanging out here in District 4. Now we can take one resource from here, and if there weren't any resources in the supply, we would not actually gain anything from that icon. In this case, though, we can take any of these, and we obviously want blue in order to better build these houses. So we can take this, and the value of that die obviously doesn't matter. This is just one blue resource for us. So that's finished our second action, and we can finish our turn by sending our assistant over here to our architect. I do want to point out that these symbols show up in many different spots on the board. You can see create refresh icons like these over here in the districts, as well as at various locations that let you take resources from the supply. All right, it's now the orange player's turn, and they are going to start by taking this three-value yellow die. That's going to move their architect over to the third district. And now they can take up to two actions. The first action is going to be putting a project tile down, and they are going to put a white project right over here. Remember, it must go adjacent to another project tile of that color if that exists in this area. And since this was a size 2, they can add that to be a size 3. Remember, you can't go up to a size 4 or more when you're putting these tiles down. Orange can put a claim token on top of that, and then they will immediately get this benefit. And as we've seen before, that lets them take a resource from the supply. So they can grab one of these, and they want this yellow resource. And now they've decided to construct a building. This is going to cost them two yellow resources. And they now have exactly two after picking up one, so these will go back to the supply. But then, of course, they also have to spend one resource for each project tile where their tokens are. In this case, they have one token, and it's on a white tile, which means they have to spend one white resource. And they happen to have a white crate, so they can use that for the resource. Next up, they can remove all of these tokens. This one is theirs, so that's going to go back to the main supply, and these are their opponents, so these will go back into our personal supply. In addition to that, since we are their opponent, we will go up once on the associated mastery track for each of these. They were on white tiles, which means we will go up twice on the white mastery track, and that brings us all the way up to here. After that, each of these white project tiles can be placed back into the supply, and they'll be replaced by three white buildings. We can place those here. And then after that, the orange player has to put a house down. That's going to come from their white row, and that is going to get them one gold after they've uncovered that symbol. And then, of course, since orange is placing a house, they will get two more victory points because of the ship tile that they got earlier on in the game. 
next up, they can place this house down onto any of these. And then finally, there is a garden next to this building. Now, every garden next to the building that was just constructed that is claimed by an opponent who does not own that building is going to go up once on a mastery track of their choice. Red is obviously not orange, so this one garden will activate, which means red can now go up one of those tracks. After considering their options, they're going to go up once on the white track. It's worth noting if they're able to move this brown one up to this spot, that would be the lowest one going up, and that is the moment that they would gain this bonus where they could take one claim token from the supply. After that, the orange player now has the option of placing a ship token down. They do have to spend one gold, and they just picked one up when they removed that white house from their board. So they're going to spend this, and then since they just constructed a size 3 building, they can only place a claim token down onto a size 3 ship. They cannot place it onto any of the other numbers. With that in mind, they could go here or here. We've already seen what this one does, and that one is quite simple. Every time in the future when you put one of these ship tokens down, you can go up once on the mastery track that matches the color of that ship token. And obviously these are all three colors, so you would choose one of those if you used that effect. Now they could of course go here as well because that is a size 3, but they're going to go onto this spot here. As you can see, they have two of their tokens in this row, but not quite three. So if they're able to put one here, that will be the moment that they could take this harbor tile. Once you have one of these harbor tiles, you can keep it for three points at the end of the game or use the effect. And this one right here says you can put a claim token down onto any ship of your choice. That one right there lets you put a claim token down onto the leftmost spot on a ziggurat where you don't have a token and you don't put a house down with this action. Next up, this one lets you refresh up to three of your cargo tiles, and you can take a new claim token. That one there can be used when you put a house down into a common district and you spend one less resource. This one lets you go up two mastery tracks of your choice. And finally, that one lets you activate any one of those six action tiles that are randomly placed into the districts at the start of the game. There are more than six of these, and you randomly put these out during setup. Well, Orange is done with their actions, so they can finish their turn by moving their assistant over here, and now it's time for the red player to go. The first thing Red needs to do is choose one of these dice, and they're going to take the two. That'll send their architect over to the second district, and now they can perform actions. They're going to begin by constructing a building, actually. That is going to cost two white resources, and they currently have one, but they also have two gold, so they'll spend this gold to cover for the other. And then they're going to build on this white project tile. Obviously, they don't have any of their tokens, so they don't have to pay any extra resources. It's just going to be those two. This is then going to have our token be removed, and we are once again going to go up once on the white mastery track, because an opponent is removing this token. This means we go up again, and if any of these mastery tokens ever reaches these specific icons, we get those benefits immediately. After that, this white project tile is going to turn into a building tile. And then red will place a white building. That has uncovered a bonus, which is going to get them one claim marker. And then they can place this building here. And then after that, they are going to spend one gold. And since they built a size one building, they can place a claim marker onto a size one ship tile. In this case, they have three options available to them. And they've decided they're going to go over here. That says every time they place a project tile down, they will gain a free water tile from the supply. Of course, these were also great options. That one gets you two victory points every time you claim another ship tile, and that one gets you two points when you place a house down, and the orange player has got a bunch of points from that already. If red had gone into either of these, then that would put them one away from taking this harbor master tile, but it looks like they are planning on putting some project tiles down soon, and they've decided that they'd rather get those free water tiles. So that's finished this action, and now they are going to do a project tile action, and they want to put a white tile down. They needed to do this second because, of course, on their first action, they built a white building, and they could not place a white project tile down anywhere except for being adjacent to that, and this turn, they didn't want to have to pay for that extra spot because of their claim token on it. Now they can place this anywhere except adjacent to this white building, and they're going to go right here. That benefit means they can immediately place another one of these project tiles of the same color, and it must go into this district, and it also must go adjacent to this tile because it matches the color. They've decided to place this one here, and that lets them take the highest value blue die from that barge. Of course, both of these are going to gain claim tokens, and since they now have this ship tile over here, it says every time they put a project tile down, they get a free water from the supply. So that means they will get two water tiles, and these can go into their area. Remember, normally you have to spend one blue resource to buy each one of these, so they've effectively bypassed two blue resources worth of water tile purchases. 
If you remember, water tiles are important because you can only build a garden on top of those, and gardens can give you extra mastery track bonuses when someone builds next to them. But gardens also increase your scoring multiplier during scoring rounds, and again, I will explain how that works soon. Before we move on, red does get to take the highest value blue die. That's going to be this 5 right here. And now red is done with both of their actions, so their turn can finish by heading over there. We still haven't reached a scoring just yet. Remember, that's going to happen at this point on a player's turn where any barge has no resources on it. And at this point, two of the barges have two resources and one of them has three. With red done, that means we can now take our turn, and we're going to take one of these blue dice. That's going to be a value 1 or a 4. If we take the 4, then we'll stay on this spot. And honestly, I think that is what we want to do. So we'll take this, and our architect won't move. Now we can start taking actions, and I think let's start with this one. That's going to cost 2 of our blue resources, and then we can place a house down. It's going to come from our bottom row over here, and let's put it onto this spot. That's going to get us a blue cargo, which we can place right here on our board. And then for our second action, let's flip this blue cargo over and then spend one of our gold in order to place a token down onto a ship. And I think we'll go onto this one here. That says for the rest of the game, every time we claim a ship tile, we'll gain two victory points. This also means if we put one of our tokens here, that'll complete this row and get us this Harbor Master token, which would let us put a claim token down onto a ziggurat, or we could keep this for three points at the end of the game. Now I know I glossed over it, but remember we spent a blue and a gold in order to put this down because we had this benefit right over here. Normally it does cost two gold. Well, let's finish our actions and our assistant doesn't have to move because our architect stayed right here. This means our turn is done and the orange player can go. Orange's architect is here, so they have to start by taking a white die and they don't have a choice. It has to be a three and this is the third district, which means the architect will not move. If Orange had a gold, they could spend that to send the architect somewhere else, but Orange does not have a gold, so that means they are a little bit trapped over here in the third district for the moment. Orange can now take two actions, and for the first one, they are going to put a project tile down. That is going to be a brown tile, and they're going to put it here. That is going to let them go up once on a mastery track of their choice. And they've decided to choose white. After that, for their second action, they are going to place another project tile. If they put a brown one, it would have to go here, and if they put a white one, it would have to go adjacent to these. And because of that, they're going to put a yellow one down over here in the corner. That is going to gain one of their claim tokens. And then this effect lets them move their architect to any district of their choice. I mentioned before that they seemed kind of trapped over here in the third district, and they're using this to get out of this trap. In particular, they want to send their architect to the 5th district. That way, they could hopefully get into this white ziggurat to score points for the buildings they have over here in the port district. They already have two of these, and they're feeling like maybe they're getting over here a little bit too slowly. They can see that on our next turn, we're going to take one of these and initiate a scoring before Orange takes another turn. So, they're a bit bummed they weren't able to get to the ziggurat before that first scoring is going to happen. Well, Orange has taken both of their actions, so they are done with their turn, and their assistant will join their architect over here in the Ziggurat district. That means it's now time for the red player to go. Red has to start by taking one of these, and they'll go with the yellow one. That's going to send their architect to the first district, and no one's actually visited this district so far in the game. You'll notice these actions all look familiar, and this is a random one that was placed there. When you activate this, you lose two victory points, but then you go up once on any mastery track of your choice. Now, after that, the red player can take two actions, and they are going to start by laying a project tile down. In particular, they're going to go for a brown one, and they're going to place it right here. That gains a claim token, and they only have one left in their supply, but when they cover this up, they will take two more claim tokens from the main, and they can add those to the one they already had, so now they have three. Of course, after they place this down, their ship will activate. If you remember from before, that's over here, so that's going to get them yet another free water tile. Red can take another action, and now that they have three claim tokens, they're going to put yet another project tile down. In this case, they've decided to place a yellow tile here. That gets them another project, so they can take another yellow, and they're going to put that here. They can put claim tokens down on each of those, and then of course they put two of these down, so this will activate two more times. They'll take two more water tiles, and that means total they have five of these to use later on in the game. Now that's finished their main actions, but they do want to take a free action. 
In this game, there are two free action options, and I've already described one of them, and that's the one they want to go for. This says they can spend one of any resource in order to refresh any of their cargo tiles. It does not have to match the resource that they just spent. In this case, they're going to spend a blue resource, and that is going to flip over a blue cargo tile. These happen to match, but they didn't have to. Now, there is a strong reason why they're doing this, and you'll see why once we perform the first scoring, which is going to happen at the end of our next turn. So, that free action is done, although before we move on, let's talk about the other free action that players can take. This lets players take a decree action from the board, and then immediately gain all of the benefits on that decree. In the top right corner of the board, we have three of these decrees. If we were playing a four-player game, we would have a fourth one down on this spot here. Now, each one of these has criteria listed on the top. The top one here says you have to have three yellow buildings. You also need to have claimed two of the white ship tiles and two of the brown ship tiles. And if you've done all of those, then as a free action, you can take this. That'll give you two of the special water tiles, one garden tile, and eight victory points. Now, we're actually pretty close to this. We have three of the yellow buildings. We also have one white ship, and we have one brown ship. So we're one of each of these away from claiming this to get a bunch of resources and, of course, a bunch of victory points. The next one we have in this game says you have to have at least six garden tiles adjacent to any of your buildings. And you also need to have two houses in the port district. So far, no one's particularly close to this, but when you achieve this, you will get to go up two different mastery tracks and then get 10 points. Finally, in this game, we have this one where you need to have at least one white, yellow, and brown building, and you have to have at least one claim token down in all three of the ziggurat areas. If you complete that, then you just get 12 victory points. I do want to point out these symbols in the top. During setup, we randomly shuffled a deck and put these out, and we kept drawing until we had three different symbols showing. And as you can see, there is a pretty large deck of decree cards that you can choose from during setup. These happen to be the three that I pulled. I suppose it's worth reiterating that you don't draw any more of these throughout the game, so these are the only three that we're playing towards in this specific play of the game. Well, Red is done with actions, so they can finish their turn by moving their assistant over here, and now it's time for us to go. And as you can see, we're over here in the port district, where there's just one die. So we have to take this one, and that's going to send our architect over here to the first district. And at the end of our turn, you'll notice we are going to have a scoring, because at least one of the barges has no dice on it. Now we can take this for the moment and put it in our area, and now take our two actions. And I think we're going to place a ship token down. It would normally cost two gold, but we are going to spend a gold and one blue resource because of this ship bonus. And I think we're going to put this token down here, and that means in the future, whenever we put houses down, we'll get two points. Now, this one right here says every time we put a ship token down, we get two points. So we can now take two points for that, which means we go up to 17. And then after that, let's use this white resource as a free action to refresh our blue cargo. Then for our second action, let's put a house down. We'll spend this blue along with a gold for the other blue. And that will let us put this house down right over here. That covered up an icon, which lets us go up one mastery track of our choice. In this case, I think we're going to go up once on the yellow mastery track. Of course, we also gain two points after putting a house down because we put that token on this ship. So that's going to bring us up to 19. Now, it is true that if we put this token here, that would have completed the row, getting us this Harbor Master tile. We could have used that to put a claim token down onto any of those Ziggurat tiles, but I felt that going onto this spot was going to be a little bit better for us. As you can see, no one else is even close to taking that away from us, so I don't think we are in a particular hurry. Well, we finished both of our actions, and at this point, we have to check to see if any barges are empty, and there is indeed one empty barge over here. That means we can now perform the first scoring of the game. There are four different steps to scoring, and the first one involves the active player taking the gold token that is on top of that scoring spot. It's our turn, so we can take this gold token, and as you can see, there are five of them out here, and we use these to track how many scorings we've had during the middle of the game. So we can take the gold and now move into the second step of scoring, where every player is going to lose all of their dice of the current color that's scoring. As you can see, we are scoring blue, so that means all players are going to lose all of their blue resource dice. In this case, that's just the red player, and every time a player loses at least one resource of a color, they will gain the associated benefit. When you lose one or more blue dice, you gain a water tile, so that means red is going to get another one of these. They have six of these water tiles, which is perhaps more than they need, but they are certainly set up for a massive gardening action later on in the game. Now, I did say that if you lose one or more dice of the color, you will then gain the benefit. So this is why red got rid of one of their blue dice, because they needed just one of them to get that. If they had two blue dice over here, they would still get just one water tile, even though they would lose both of those dice. 
Now, if we were scoring green, then players would lose all of their green dice, and if they lost at least one, they would gain a single garden tile. And then with the yellow, brown, and white dice, if you lose at least one, then you go up once on the associated mastery track. So it's not all bad losing those resources, but you want to make sure you don't have too many of them in front of you because any more than one is going to be an inefficient situation for you. After players lose dice, it's then time for the third step of scoring, where we are going to score the specific district that does not have any dice on its barge. In this case, that means we are scoring the port district, and the way this works is all players are going to gain one point for every one of their claim tokens in the same row or column as one of their buildings. That means for us, we will get one two points for this building in that row, and then three four points for this building here in that column. All told, that means we are going to get four points from this port scoring, bringing us up to 23. The orange player is going to get one for this column, and then two, three for this row. So that means orange gets three total, bringing them up to 19. Unfortunately for the red player, they do have a couple of these claim tokens out, but they don't have any buildings, which means they don't get any points during this port district scoring. Once we've scored that district, we can move into the fourth step of the overall scoring round, where we are going to grab all of the dice associated with the district that just scored, and then we are going to roll them, and then put them back onto their associated barge. After that, the scoring is done, and we can finish our turn by sending our assistant over here to match up with our architect. Now, at this point, it would now be time for the orange player to go, but I would actually like to talk a little bit more about scoring, because we only discussed scoring the port district, and there are four other districts that can be scored in this game. In particular, let's start by talking about districts 1, 2, and 3, because all of them score the same way. As an example, let's look over here to District 2. Now, the way scoring districts works is every player is going to score points for all of the buildings that they have in that specific district, and you are going to add up the number of buildings you have over there, and you are going to add one for every garden that is adjacent to those buildings. So that means for the orange player, they have three white buildings, and there is one garden next to them. So that means they have a four multiplier, and they would then multiply that against their mastery track modifier. That modifier is over here on the left, so in this example, orange is at the one victory point spot, and they would get four times one, or four victory points for that. Obviously, if they had more gardens next to this, like maybe if that was there, that would add yet another, and if their token was up to the three spot, then in this case, they would get five times three, or 15 points, when scoring that specific building. Now, as I said, every player is going to score for all of the buildings that they have in that specific district. Because of this, you should now be able to see that there is a symbiotic relationship between the buildings and these gardens, in particular the gardens of your opponents. If a building is constructed next to a garden controlled by an opponent, they go up once on the mastery track, which maybe isn't too great for the player who just built the building, but of course that garden is going to increase that player's multiplier, so they're probably happy enough to build next to that garden and give their opponent that mastery track bump. Of course, you can build your own gardens up to your buildings or build buildings next to your gardens. You just don't get a bonus bump on a track when you build next to one of your own gardens. Now that we've discussed how districts 1, 2, and 3 are scored, the final one is the Ziggurat district. When this district scores, each one of the Ziggurat tokens will score. As you can see, they each have different scoring conditions on them, and there are a bunch of them that you can play with. You just bring out a random 3 each time you play the game. Now, as I mentioned before, each player is going to score points based off of their rightmost token on each of these, and they'll score points based off of the specific multiplier. This one right over here would get us two points for every one of our buildings in the port district, so if the Ziggurat district was to score right now, we would get two times our two buildings, which means we'd get four victory points total. This one over here has to do with the number of lines on the mastery tracks your tokens have crossed, and that one over there multiplies against the number of garden tiles that are next to your buildings out in districts 1, 2, and 3. Once again, when we score this district, each player will score for their rightmost token on all three of these ziggurat tiles. So, that's how all of the districts in the game score. Now, as you can see in this moment, there is just one die in District 3 and two over here and two. Uh, so, what that means is districts that are visited more often are going to score earlier on in the game and potentially score more often. Now, at this point, it is time for the orange player to go, but I think I'm going to stop playing through the game and instead discuss how the game ends and how we perform final scoring. Now, the game end is triggered based off of scorings. Once again, up here on the top right, we use these gold tokens to track how many have happened. Once the fifth scoring happens, we are going to keep playing until everyone has had the same number of turns, and we can use this to keep track of that, and then we will all take one more turn. Now, once the end game has been triggered, it's still possible that at the end of a player's turn, there might be no dice in one of these districts, 
and in that case, you do a pseudo scoring where no player gets a bonus gold and then all players lose their dice, then you don't actually score the district, but then you gather all of the dice, roll them, and put them back onto the barge. So again, once the end game has been triggered, you don't get points for any districts that clear out. Once everyone has taken their final turn, we will move into final scoring, and this is really simple. We just score every single one of the five districts. That means no matter what, every district in the game is going to be scored at least once, and it's possible that some districts might be scored two or even more times over the course of a game. Once we score every one of the districts, the final thing we get points for are these urban cards. You may have noticed these in our area as the game went on, and during setup we all received one of these, and sometimes there are ways to get more of these as the game goes on. Now, these simply give you goals for a number of buildings in specific districts on the board. For example, the one that we've had says at the end of the game we will get 10 victory points if we have 2 buildings in District 1 and 3 buildings in District 2. Obviously, at this point in the game, we haven't really been working towards that very well. Our opponents have a couple of these as well, and sometimes they actually dictate having buildings over in the port district, but for these example cards, it looks like none of them have that. We've got a big deck of these urban cards, and when we look through them, you can see examples just like that. So these only have to do with the first four districts. These never have anything to do with houses placed into the fifth ziggurat district. After scoring every district as well as those urban cards, the player with the most victory points will be the winner, and if there is a tie, then the player with the most gold left over at the end of the game will break the tie in their favor. If there's still a tie, then those players will share in the victory. Well, at this point, I've taught just about all of the rules to the game, which means this tutorial is coming to a close. I hope that you enjoyed learning how to play Tabanusi, and please, if any part of this game really jumped out to you, or if you feel like one of the players should have done something significantly different on their turns, then definitely comment down below. I love to hear feedback like that. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including these producer-level Patreon supporters. If you too would like to directly support the channel in the creation of future videos like this one, then please go to jongetsgames.com support. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.